Well, um, in 1993, when we published our first book, we moved on to try to, and when I say we, I'm talking about Brian Jones and myself, we moved on to see if we could get funding to create a very large database about all U.S. government activities. And we were successful eventually in getting funding to create the U.S. Agen the Policy Agendas Project. And that project now uh, incorporates over a million records of government activities from World War I, World War II to close to the present. So this would just be a record, for example, that on such a date a congressional hearing was held in, in a certain committee on a certain topic. And these are comprehensive databases, and so we know every congressional hearing, every bill that was introduced in Congress, every speech by the president, a sample of stories in the major newspapers, every law that was passed, and an analysis also of the budget. And there's other aspects to the databases, and those are all publicly available. And um, teams of c collaborators have created a network that has replicated this exact structure of databases all linked by a common set of topic codes of which there's about 250. So we could track, for example, how much attention has there been to water pollution or any other or fisheries management or um, civil rights issues for immigrants uh, or whatever the topic might be. We have a, a, a classification system of all government activities and that allows us to track uh, when did government start to pay attention to topic X, Y, or Z. And so that network now is active in about 15 countries, and some of the countries are quite far along. For example, in Denmark, there's an established program that's been, that already has created all those databases, and many books and articles have already been published on the Danish public agenda over the last 10 years. Other countries are at the beginning of data collection, for example, in Croatia. And Germany's one of the countries that's in the middle. There's a lot of data already collected, but there's more work to do before we could say we had a complete project. But this is a huge collaboration with maybe 100 people all around in different countries that are each developing their national project. Next year, we hope to have a website that will allow us to analyze all that data simultaneously online for free worldwide. Uh, and I hope that many people in Germany will use that. Well, in, in the theoretical collaboration, of course, it's always important to explain oneself clearly. In the infrastructure development, we have to have certain agreements about terms. And the most important thing for us is to understand there's really two, two important rules that we have to have. One is what government activities shall be studied. So, for example, in every country, there's something called a law. But in many countries, there's other things called regulations or decrees or decree laws or executive orders or some other kind of administrative mechanism through which you can have an impact of a law. Uh, so we try to understand what are the appropriate activities to study. And it turns out that that differs quite substantially in different countries. For example, in the U.S., one of the most useful databases we have is a database of congressional hearings. And these are investigations or meetings and question and answer sessions that are held by congressional committees in the U.S. Congress. No other country in our network has a, f a phenomenon similar to that of any scope. In most countries, the similar um, activity would be oral question time in Parliament or sometimes it's written questions in, um, in Parliament. Those are quite different, but they, they, create a, they, they play a similar role, but they're slightly different because they're particularly used by the parliamentary opposition, whereas in the U.S. Congress, the congressional hearings are typically dominated by the majority party. Um, so that's just an example of a, a different institutional process which we study in different countries uh, where we have to understand clearly what, we, what exactly we're studying. The second aspect where we have to have clarity is when I say that a certain bill in the U.S. Congress was on the topic of water pollution, 
And then there's a similar bill in Germany. We need to make sure that it's classified in the exact same way. So we have to have a lot of communication and training so that the students and scholars that are creating the databases in each of the different countries have a common understanding of this very lengthy list of classifications or topics that we have. There's about 250 of them. And most of them are straightforward, but occasionally there's some confusions, uh, especially as it relates to the form of the welfare state in different countries. You know, um, there's some forms, for example, of family assistance that um, maternal care that occur that are common in many European countries that we don't have in the United States, and we have certain forms of other government programs that don't exist. In Britain, they have a a royal family, and in Germany, there's no royal family that the government pays attention to, and some countries there's an official religion, and in the United States, of course, there's no official religion. So there's uh, some peculiarities to our topic list, but when there's a, a congressional hearing or a law or a prime minister's speech about the topic of uh, the war against terrorism in Iraq or Syria, then we, we want to make sure that we code that in the exact same manner when it's the exact same activity. So those are the two points of clarity where we have to really establish strong norms of uh, common understanding. But those are practical matters, they're simply definitional matters, so that we're all dealing with the exact same information in our databases. They're not uh, anyone's desire to impose a common or single theoretical statement about what we're doing. We shy away from that. We don't want to do that. We want to let the theory develop from the data or in people's analyses of the data. Well, there's a lot of things that people can do um, straight from the web. They can look at, pick a topic and understand when did that topic surge uh, onto the government agenda in country A, B, or C. Um, but there's another aspect to our research that I think students can add. And I guess I would, I would point to a topic where I've done some additional research and similar to the research on the Agendas Project, but it, it delves off a little bit and it gets much more into framing. And that was a research project I did, published in 2008, about the decline of the United States death penalty. And the death penalty is not a topic of much activity by the U.S. federal government because it's the criminal justice in the United States is run by the states. Um, but obviously, the presence of capital punishment in the United States is, is a point of great interest and it's a great peculiarity of the United States, uh, of certain states in the United States even. Uh, and so I wanted to understand how that policy has changed so much, and it has changed dramatically, and the death penalty is on its way to oblivion in the United States. But it's on its way to oblivion because of a very interesting set of framing developments. And we've developed a new way of arguing about the death penalty that I think can be tracked through media coverage of the topic uh, and government activity. And what the, th the thing that was interesting in that research project was we were able to demonstrate that the media framing about the death penalty could be used statistically to predict the number of death sentences. And I think that was a real interesting innovation. I was really happy to be able to develop that because it showed that we could develop a firm indicator of the state of a public policy and then predict that indicator, whether it was going up or down or remaining stable, and predict that indicator with a measure of media framing. So I think linking the study of framing with the study of agenda setting is the, probably the most important thing that we can do in, in going into the future, developing better ways to measure frames, to measure how policymakers attempt to promote frames, how lobbyists and government officials try to push certain understandings rather than others, and to measure that over time. That's a big challenge, and that would be a wonderful thing to make some advance on.